Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. There's a lot of myths around intermittent fasting that might make you think twice about trying it. I'm going to look at the top five myths that I see, and interestingly, they're usually completely wrong and the opposite of what you might have thought. I'm going to talk about those coming right up. Number one. Fasting causes starvation mode. What people are talking about is this idea that as you fast, your body is going to lower its metabolic rate. That is the number of calories it's going to burn in a day. This is the big problem with calorie reduced diets. When people are eating a low fat diet and eating all the time and counting their calories, they could get their calories down to 1500, even 1200. The problem is that the body would burn 1500 or 1200 and weight loss would simply stop. However, with intermittent fasting, it's actually the opposite. Instead of dropping your metabolic rate, fasting tends to maintain that metabolic rate as opposed to uh, those, those other diets. The reason is simple. When you fast, there are certain things that happen in the body. The Insulin uh, go, levels go down, but other hormones go up, and these are the counter-regulatory hormones, among which are the sympathetic nervous system and noradrenaline. This is basic first-year medical student stuff. As you ramp up the body by stimulating the sympathetic nervous system, remember this is your fight-or-flight response, you're going to preserve that. In fact, in studies, of the metabolic rate with fasting, when they took people who uh, were fasting at day zero compared to four days of fasting and measured their metabolic rate, they found that after four days of no food, their bodies were actually burning 10% more calories, not less calories. <clears throat> so you weren't going into starvation mode. In fact, your body was activating itself. And it's activating itself using energy from your own body, which is body fat, which is exactly what we want to see. So yes, starvation mode happens when you use calorie reduced diets, but not so much when you use intermittent fasting. And that's a huge advantage for weight loss. Myth number two, uncontrollable hunger. The other problem with weight loss, of course, is that you might get hungry. And in fact, we do see this with calorie reduced diets hunger tends to go up. And if you're more hungry, it's going to be harder to stick to your diet. So people imagine that intermittent fasting is the same thing. There's a hormone that makes us hungry called ghrelin, and we can measure what it does um, when we do intermittent fasting. While it does go up initially, when you stop eating for a day, it goes back to baseline. That is, think about it this way. When you eat lunch, you're hungry, ghrelin goes up. What if you didn't eat lunch? Well, you'd be hungry at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, but by 4 o'clock, your ghrelin levels have gone right back to baseline. They're normal. They're, they're, they're no different than if you ate. So what happened? Simple. Your body simply took the energy it needed out of its body fat stores, because that's all it is. Body fat is a store of food energy or calories. Because your body is taking the calories from their body, it's not hungry anymore. No different than if it took calories from food. It's simply a stored place. So in fact, when you measure ghrelin, it doesn't keep going up and up and up. People imagine that fasting causes so much hunger that you're not going to be able to control yourself. But in fact, we see the opposite. People say, I think my stomach shrank. I'm not hungry anymore. When people do longer fasts, we know that over three, four, five days, ghrelin tends to go down every single day. And that's how people used to do these seven day, 30 day fasts because they simply weren't hungry. They're fueling themselves on their body fat and it was fine with that. Myth number three, it burns muscle. You might have 100,000, 200,000 um, calories worth of energy sitting on your body right now. As your body doesn't eat, it's going to look for a source of calories and it's going to take it from the body fat. 
if muscle were the first place it's going to look, you'd have to think that the human body is just so incredibly stupid as to store energy in the form of sugar and fat, but as soon as it needs it, it's going to burn muscle. It's sort of like spending all summer um, getting firewood. And then as soon as it gets cold, instead of burning the firewood for heat, you chop up your sofa and throw it in the flames. Like, why would you do that? How would we have even survived as a species if the first thing we did was burn all our muscle? Those people, those cavemen and cavewomen, would have been nothing but little sacks of fat because they would have burned all their muscles and then they would have died and we wouldn't have been here. So it makes no sense from a physiologic standpoint. And we know from our studies of physiology that there's a very, very short uh, period of protein burning, but not necessarily muscle. There's a lot of other tissue in the body that your body would happily get rid of. That is skin, connective tissue, all kinds of things. So all that loose skin that people, when they, uh, that people have when they lose fat, that's not fat, that's protein and it needs to be burned off. Myth number four. Fasting deprives the body of nutrients. Um, this one's a tough one because you really have to think about this closely. Which nutrients are you really talking about? Because when you're talking about food, it contains two things. One is the energy, that is the calories. And the calories can come from anywhere. It can come from proteins, carbs, fats, and it can come from your own body. If you're trying to lose weight, obviously we're not concerned about the calorie part of it. So which nutrients are you talking about? Which vitamins, which minerals? Is it amino acids? Because the average obese person has 20 to 50% more protein than the lean person. Is it fat? Fatty acids, essential fatty acids? Well, obviously no, because there is plenty of fat. So it's not essential nutrients. Is it vitamins and minerals? If it is, you can simply take a daily multivitamin that will provide everything you need. So saying that simply that the body is deprived of nutrients is very vague and non-specific and very non-scientific. Yes, you're depriving the body of calories, but that's what we're trying to do. So it's not something bad, it's, it's something good. And myth number five, that this is an unsustainable fad diet. Uh, this part is just ridiculous because you can find references to fasting in the Bible. So you know that this uh, practice goes back at least 2,022 years. In fact, every major religion in the world has periods of fasting. In fact, we have a word, the English word breakfast, or the meal that breaks your fast, means that you should be fasting every day. Fasting is nothing mysterious. It's just a period of time that you're not eating. So think about it this way. If your body has 24 hours, part of it you spend feeding. When you feed, you take in energy, which is calories, and you can store some of that energy. But you're taking in more energies at that time than you can use. So when you're not eating, now you're allowing your body to use those, those stored calories. If we didn't have this ability, we'd die in our sleep every single night. But obviously, we're still all here. In the past, we used to tell our people's not uh, our kids not to snack. Now we tell them to eat all the time, eat all the time, eat all the time, as if our body had no ability to store those calories. In fact, there's too much of those calories. So give your body a break. Give your body a break from eating so it can use the calories that you stored. That's all fasting is. It's not some mysterious voodoo. It's in fact part of a natural feeding fasting cycle. If you want to store more energy, feed more. If you want to use more energy, that is reduce body fat, then fast more.